Scarlett Johansson as a Transformer? Chris Hemsworth as Optimus Prime? A Transformers movie devoid of obligatory human characters? And it's all animated? Well, that's certainly a turn. So yeah, last week's movie mega event, CinemaCon, brought on a lot of big news with it. And we're covering all of it this week. Previously, we've done SpongeBob Movie 4 and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well as Moana 2 coverage. But while Disney is always the big wig showing off some pretty big projects, like Inside Out 2 that we still haven't covered yet, we could always look to Paramount for their borderline unhinged presentation and ideas. However, the premise behind this movie is actually one that they announced at the last CinemaCon. It's just now we're finally coming full circle. That being that this is an animated Transformers movie, which will be a prequel going back to Optimus and the gang's origins. And this isn't a straight to streaming thing either, this is a full on theatrically released Transformers animation. Now I'm not particularly informed when it comes to the Transformers franchise, again, it's a little bit of an 80s and 90s cartoon vibe and I just, I, I skipped it, I'm not a Cars boy, I didn't know my father. But thankfully I didn't need to get into the Michael Bay movies. As now that it's finally relevant for me to actually pay attention to this franchise, the trailer is dropping as we speak. You can see it shuffle behind me as I voice this video, but I'm actually recording this the night before and I don't know what this trailer footage looks like. Is it good editor me? Great! Oh, I'll make a note of the fact that trailers do come out digitally after CinemaCon, but it takes an entire seven day delay first. But anyway, I'm here to give you the info. So on the more obvious front, this project is set for a September release later this year already. It's in the can and it's on its way to us. I'm stunned that there's so many of these movies being announced and shown for the first time and they come out in mere months. I would have thought all of this is 2025 news, you know? But anyway, as much as I might not know the direct plot lines of the Transformers movies and the like, I do know a good bit of the story of the franchise and their presence through the years. Already they've been going through quite a transformation, following the five Michael Bayhem movies simultaneously making money and making a good Transformers movie an impossible thing. Nonetheless, that's what Travis Knight did with Bumblebee a few years back, if I'm to believe the reviews, followed by last year's somewhat mid Rise of the Beasts. Although the fact that a mid Transformers movie is an improvement tells you all you need to know about the Michael Bay era really. But now they're going back to their 80s origins with a full on animated movie. Mwah, that's kind of more my theme. It's gonna star Chris Hemsworth as Optimus taking over from the legendary Peter Cullen. Does this mean, <laughs> does this mean he'll take over for Eeyore 2? Now for many, this is going to evoke nightmares of Chris Pratt as Mario and Garfield. You know, it's not far off, it's just another Marvel Chris. And considering we've already thrown Chris Evans into the role of Buzz Lightyear, it definitely seems like we're heading for a future where all animated leads are going to be voiced by Marvel actors called Chris. And even outside of Marvel, Chris is still taking over the world. Chris Prime, he's, he's getting jobs. Scarlett Johansson's also in the cast for this, playing as Alita. So it does feel a tad like they're marketing this on the MCU cred. Even still, I guess this is better than one alternative they could have chosen for this timeline. That being the example where, and, I, and I'm sure he was well compensated and is perfectly happy, with it, but, but did you know that James L. Joan has consented to future Darth Vader appearances being done with an AI voice replicating him? That's crazy to me. Thankfully, Transformers hasn't gone in that route again for Peter Cullen. Like, it weirdly makes sense for that particular character in the case of Darth Vader, as in universe, it is technically meant to be an AI voice, but I don't know, technology is getting gross. Though I guess at the same time, James Earl Jones does seem irreplaceable. It's an iconic voice on that front. Even though I'm sure there were plenty of capable voice actors, countless amounts that could do a very solid Vader impression, who won't get paid now, so eh. Although I guess going on the logic of AI voices, it would make sense for the Transformers since they are definitely artificial intelligence, so it may have been tempting. Maybe if it was another standard Michael Bay style, we employed Maraca players to operate the cameras kind of Transformers movie, they would have gone that way. However, in a movie that looks set to be away from Earth and entirely focused on Cybertron and space, it would have been a mistake to have the lead performance be AI. That was a long way of saying, Chris Hemsworth? Sure. At CinemaCon, Hemsworth even came out himself and said that he made sure he consulted with Peter Cullen when approaching a younger version of the character, which is very cool. It seems like he's done more than just turn up to the booth holding an invoice, so I guess that's good news. It's nice when movies are still art. It's a dying thing, the artistic side. We'll see how it goes. He'll either genuinely pull it off as a voice actor you can buy as a younger Peter Cullen, or he'll do a Chris Pratt where it's barely distinguishable from his regular voice. You'll have to put on an American accent though, so I guess that's something. Unless we do get an Australian Optimus Prime, that would be an interesting one. 
Thank you for making it halfway through this video. Since you seem to be interested this far in, do consider subscribing down below if you haven't already. And let me know your thoughts on Transformers 1 as a movie and Transformers as a franchise. We've never addressed it on the channel before, so I'd love to get a vibe for what my audience is into. And you can keep the discussion going with our community over on our Discord server, if you like, linked in the description. Anyway, I'll let you get back to the rest of the info regarding Transformers 1. Anyway, as I've mentioned, you've also got Scarlett Johansson on board as Alita, and I get the vibe that the character will get a significant role this time. Not her first time doing animation for Paramount, of course, because who could forget her as Mindy in the original Spongebob movie? She was like 19 when she recorded for that movie, that's mad. Paramount also announced the fourth Spongebob movie, by the way, so go check out yesterday's video if you want to see us cover that. Again, Paramount, unhinged. No wonder you need someone to buy you, you insane company. Anyway, she's on board as well as Brian Tyree Henry as Megatron. That's great. We also have Keegan-Michael Key as Bumblebee, so I'm guessing he talks in this one. Although I really hope we don't get a brutal scene of Bumblebee getting muted. That seems a little bit inappropriate. I wasn't particularly impressed with Keegan's uh, toad work in the Mario movie, so maybe he's going to end up being a not quite as bad, but kind of falling down the rabbit hole Chris Pratt route, but we'll see. You also have Lawrence Fishburne as Alpha Trion and John Hamm as Sentinel Prime. So this cast is stacked, as any modern animated movie is now. They are definitely going all in on this animated Transformers movie, and I'm interested to see what comes of it. Infamously, kids of the 80s know all too well that this isn't the first time that Transformers have done an animated movie, but this takes us back to the origins of Transformers, now over 40 years ago. Originally a Japanese toy franchise with no particular narrative attached, it's just cars that turn into robots. What more do you want? Well, inevitably, America wanted a lot more. And so to promote the toy, they got Marvel Comics to develop all the characters and turn them into a comic book. So really, with those Marvel actors involved, it's kind of a return to the beginning, I guess. Anyway, with the comic book series successfully underway, it wasn't long before an animated series went into development. At this time, we were in the era of He-Man and G.I. Joe lighting up Saturday mornings, getting 80s kids and their bowls of cereal excited to buy some toys after all. It was an interesting time, really, when bowls of cereal were buying toys. Manipulating children for capitalism was at an all-time high, and the robot cars were ready to full-on conquer the market. And that they did. Transformers launched in 1984 and Borderline took over the world. With so many characters in the series, kids were raring to go to Toys R Us and other retailers that have since gone bust. <laughs> you know, capitalism was at a high 40 years ago, so it's kind of the end result. However, that wasn't enough for the boys at Hasbro. No, now kids had all the characters in the series, they needed to introduce a new line of characters to make more money. So how did they do that? They made a theatrically released animated movie in 1986, only two years after they first launched the franchise. Cool. Anything else? Yeah, they introduced the new line of characters by killing all the old ones in the first 20 minutes. Oh, S spoilers? That seems pretty cold for a movie made for kids. Was anyone upset by that? <laughs> yeah, they were. I literally know people in their 40s who are still scarred by this to this day. Anyway, after murdering the entire principal cast, including a deathbed scene for Optimus Prime, where he completely turns grey, what a time in the 80s, an entire generation of traumatised kids solidified the reputation of the Transformers movie. So with this first time return to animated Transformers movies, what things could they learn from this almost 40 year gap? Well, as long as they don't butcher the entire principal cast in the opening scene, then I think we're good. Unless they start it off like that and then say it was a dream as a right old gag to the whole thing. According to initial sources, the main hook of the movie is going to be telling the story of when Optimus and Megatron were friends and what eventually turned them against each other. We'll also see that they didn't always have their somewhat bombastic names and in fact once had more basic names. For alien robots, anyway. However, generally, they haven't given away too much about the movie so far. Anything close to plot points will be revealed in the trailer that you're watching right now. Is there much to learn from it, future editor Daz? Alright, I'll take that on board. Based on the initial image that I do have to look at right now, it looks a tad anime-esque, which is pretty cool. At least it looks a little bit different to the trend of ripping off Spider-Verse, anyway. This is Paramount, remember, who already did that with Ninja Turtles, so I'm glad they're not just doing that with all their franchises. But anyway, that is all the info we have up to this point on Transformers 1. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie. As for now, 
My name's been Daz. Thank you very much for reaching the end of this video. Do you think this will be any good? Or will it just be another generic animated Transformers movie exclusively made for toys? Bringing us right round to a horrific 40 year cycle. I'd love to get your thoughts. Do let us know in the YouTube comments below or on our Discord server. And I shall see you in a little bit.